My name is Laura. I'm 34 and I've had diabetes since I was 10. I um, was diagnosed the summer before I went into middle school and um, wanted to do everything on my own when I first got diagnosed, wanted to be independent, give myself shots and check my blood sugar and uh, my parents wanted to be involved and be supportive and I think I really wanted to feel like I was independent taking care of it on my own. Didn't take horrible care of myself but gradually kind of slipped into a pattern of just taking insulin and kind of getting, playing guessing games. And then when I got out of school and moved on my own and started my first job teaching in Florida, um, I really kind of fell into a period of about eight years where I definitely was not taking care of myself and uh, really fought that diabetes was even a part of my life. I just wanted to try to minimize it and take some shots so I wouldn't feel awful, but yet not really be aware of what was going on with my blood sugar and, and everything, so. One memory that stands out is I went to see my endocrinologist and I didn't have a log book to give to her. She always wanted a log book with all my blood sugars in it. And I didn't have that because I wasn't checking my blood sugar. And I was sitting in the office looking around and I felt like everybody in the waiting area was a sick person. And I didn't want to be a sick person. And there was a man there that had had part of his leg amputated and I, I could see the effects of not caring for yourself with diabetes. And I didn't want to be that person. I didn't want to belong in that room or I wanted to be the success story. I wanted to, to feel like diabetes was a part of me and it was a part that I controlled and that it wasn't something that controlled me. And you're not the only person with diabetes uh, in the world. You're not alone. There are other people who are going through this and if they can take care of themselves, you can take care of yourself. You are a strong person. Diabetes is just part of your life and it, it doesn't, doesn't determine who you are, but it is a part of, of who you are. I'm really excited. My A1C last week was 6.7 percent, which is the lowest that it's ever been. I went on an insulin pump about a year ago and I found a group of women who have diabetes that um, are a support for me both online and sometimes face-to-face. And you know they're, they're role models for how to take care of themselves. And some of them have diabetes shorter time than I have, some longer. Um, but they're just all very positive influence and support. And if I'm up in the middle of the night with a low blood sugar, I can email my friend out in California and she'll respond. And, and I know she knows what I'm going through because she's going through the same thing. So I, I feel like I've finally got the people in place that, that I need to help support me. I manage diabetes on my own because it's a disease that I have, but I've figured out how to let other people help with that. Well, I think everybody has a story and everybody with diabetes has a story. And a lot of the stories, again, are, are sad or lonely or overwhelmed, angry even. Uh, and I think everybody has the potential to have a diabetes story that, that is not those things. Diabetes can be a lot of things. It can be scary, uh, it can make you feel lonely, um, it, it can be make you angry because it's not, not what you want to have as part of your life, um, but it doesn't have to be your life. I think you can, you can let it be a part of who you are and control it and manage it, take care of it, and be stronger than the disease itself.